All right, what's happening? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I think it's a good time to look into the fact that we have the 16th overall pick. Let's break it all the way down. Let's look at some recent history for recent 16th overall picks. Does it have a good track record, or is this a cursed pick or a blessed pick? Also, let's take a look at some of the best players ever drafted 16th overall in the NFL draft. And then, of course, the main part of this video, we got to take a look at all of our options 16th overall, especially at our three biggest needs, offensive line, corner, and I'm going to go with linebacker as well. I feel like quarterback is still fairly obvious, depending on how you feel about things. Y'all know I'm a big Anthony richardson guy i'm willing to take them and take that risk but we're not going to really talk about that today because i don't think either of those guys make it to 16 you're probably going to have to trade up for them so i want to make sure i focus on offensive line cornerback and linebacker for that 16th overall pick and then we also got to talk about and explore whether or not trading back makes the most sense i mean with the way that we ended up getting Jahan dotson and all of the other guys include sam howell and those guys because we traded back with the way that this draft is shaping up trading back looks like the smartest idea right now we'll see though we got to dive into all of the players that will be available in 16 and a lot of the players that may be even available past that well into the early 20s that we could possibly trade back to so we're going to do a full dive into this 16th overall pick the past the present and the future but before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you pull up every sunday including tomorrow for the commanders live stream where i do the call in show y'all call in we talk about everything it can be commanders it can be draft free agency franchise quarterback offensive coordinators or it can be anything basketball anime whatever y'all want to talk about make sure y'all pull up and call in and talk about it ask whatever question you may have and again stay tuned for all of the content because i have so many videos coming out so many ideas all of the film sessions that i'm working on will be channel member exclusive so make sure you become a channel member as well and without further ado let's get it All right, I think first we should start with some of the recent history and then we'll go back to the greatest 16th overall picks of all time. Let's start with 2022. Crazy enough, 16th overall pick of last year's draft was Jahan Dotson. Remember though, we did not start with the 16th overall pick. We came in with the 11th and then traded back to 16 with the Saints. And so we're going to dive into how that ended up turning out and why trading back in this upcoming draft could also be a very smart move. But even though we didn't come into the 2022 NFL draft with the 16th overall pick, we traded back and ended up selecting 16th overall, which just so happens to be the pick that we ended up with naturally going into this 2023 draft. And remember, we ended up getting wide receiver Jahan Dotson and and that looks like it ended up being a home run pick, especially the ability to trade back and still get a guy that good. He looks like another wide receiver one. We have two of them. And Curtis Samuel's still a baller as well. And Curtis Samuel's still one of them guys as well. We just need an offensive coordinator and a quarterback and an offensive line. They can find a way to get the most out of him. But Curtis Samuel, don't forget about him as well. But Jahan Dotson, being able to trade back and get a player that good is insane. So that's 2022. Then 2021, Arizona Cardinals linebacker Zayvon Collins from Tulsa. Another guy that I really wanted, we ended up not getting him. Haven't necessarily checked in on him to see how well he's been playing. I haven't heard much of him, to be completely honest. So maybe he's not performing to the expectations that I had of him. I feel like if we would have ended up getting him, he would end up being a stronger contributor. But who knows, man. Then 2020, the Atlanta Falcons drafted my Westlake High School dog, AJ Terrell, the defensive back out of Clemson. He's already made second team all pro. Again, did I mention that he was from Westlake? Yeah, you know I mean, Cam Newton. Adam Pacman Jones, Malik Willis. Also, potential top offensive tackle in the 2025 recruiting class as well. Make sure y'all look out for my boy Juan Gaston over there too. Then in 2019, the Carolina Panthers took linebacker Brian Burns, and that's been working out very well for them as well. Pro Bowler 2018, the Buffalo Bills took linebacker Tremaine Edmonds. I wanted him really bad. So far, out of all of the names we've talked about, he was the guy I probably wanted the most in his respective draft compared to all of the other guys, Zayvon Collins, AJ Terrell, Brian Burns. I really wanted and Tremaine Edmonds, man. He's already been a two-time pro bowler and everything, man. Infinite potential. Then 2016, the Detroit Lions took Taylor Decker, the tackle. 2015, the Houston Texans took DB Kevin Johnson. In 2014, the Dallas Cowboys took tackle Zach Martin, and that's enough said. Five-time first-team All-Pro, two-team second-team All-Pro, seven-time pro bowler. I mean, 
that says it all and then after that well technically before that chronologically it's not as impressive i mean 2013 the buffalo bills took quarterback ej manuel that was just a terrible class anyway as far as quarterbacks go that season and in 2012 the rg3 draft the new york jets took defensive end quentin copels from north carolina but of course the most notable 16th overall pick taken here is tackle zach martin from the cowboys you could definitely say second would be tremaine edmonds maybe third aj terrell and brian burns neck and neck potentially but you could argue aj terrell has been more impactful than brian burns making a second team all pro which brian burns has yet to do but that's westlake for you, you know what i mean and then 247 sports put together an article of the top 16 picks of all time you have gene washington from the 49ers 1969 you have Russ Francis, tight end from the New England Patriots, 1975. Raymond Claiborne, the cornerback from the New England Patriots, 1977. Jim Richard, the guard from the Buffalo Bills, 1980. Jerry Rice, San Francisco 49ers, 1985. Chester McLaughlin, defensive tackle from the Los Angeles Raiders, 1992. Hugh Douglas, defensive end, New York Jets from 1995. Julian Peterson, linebacker from the 49ers, 2000. Santana Moss, our very own wide receiver from the New York Jets, 2001 i'm so happy that he ended up a washington redskin because our history wouldn't be the same without a santana moss in it and then of course also you can't forget safety troy palomalu pittsburgh Steelers, 2003 that's some pretty good history right there recently and overall in nfl history that's pretty good i mean of course you're not going to be able to stand up to number one number two top 10 overall picks but outside of the top 10 16th overall has done a pretty good job so now that we got that quick history lesson out of the way let's get to the part of the video that i'm pretty sure most of y'all care about and who are a lot of the best players available with the 16th overall pick potentially when we pick in the 2023 nfl draft if we stay 16th who's probably going to be there well let's start with offense alignment of course you have offensive tackle Broderick jones from georgia i would love to get him there but i just don't honestly think he makes it there even though mel kuyper predicted that he would in his mock draft but i don't think he will especially after the combine and people see how strong and explosive he is i think it's pretty much going to be a done deal then you have paris johnson jr tackle from ohio state buckeyes you have peter skaronski offensive tackle from the northwestern wildcats you have Andrew Voorhees, the interior offensive lineman from the USC Trojans. And then after that, starts to get a little ugly as far as like value goes. I mean, Cedric Van Pran from Georgia, the center, you may have considered him worthy of the 16th overall pick even though i would have taken my chances trying to get him in the second maybe even the third but then he just went back to georgia for another year so he's out of the contention so as far as offensive linemen really those top three tackles are the only guys that are honestly worth it right there especially according to draft network now i still have a lot more tape to watch so let me go ahead and give that disclaimer now i haven't watched all of the tape that i've needed to so far yet it's early in the off season, so I'll have a more developed and more informed opinion on a lot of these guys later on down the line, especially by the time we get to April. But as of right now, it looks like Broderick Jones, Paris Johnson Jr., and Peter Skaronski are the only offensive linemen that may even be worth taking 16th overall, if they even make it that far down, because tackle is a premium position. And then out of all of the interior offensive linemen, there's nobody really worth it that high. But again, I have a lot more tape to watch, so I could be tripping. Now, cornerbacks is where it gets really interesting 16th overall. The draft network feels like christian gonzalez is the sixth best player in this entire draft and i don't have too much to disagree with i mean y'all know i'm a georgia bulldog fan love keely ringo and even with him having the highest ceiling in this draft class just off a of natural god-given talent and physical ability he's just far too inconsistent and raw and i'm worried about even taking him 16th overall the draft network feels like he's the 22nd best player in the draft but christian gonzalez man he's different joey porter i love him from penn state as well they have him 13th overall they have cam smith the cornerback from south carolina 17th overall they have devin witherspoon 27th overall and i would argue he is largely underrated right there i think devin witherspoon 16th overall could even make some sense with his versatility can play in a slot outside wherever you need him to so i think that's really interesting there but we're going to talk about trade back scenarios later but if the draft network is correct and devin witherspoon could potentially be there if we were to trade back into the 20s i think that's a home run draft right there but y'all know i'm a big christian gonzalez and joey porter fan at this point again love keely ringo and his potential but 16th overall is a little rich
switch there. But according to the draft network, they don't think Joey Porter or Christian Gonzalez will even be available by the time we pick 16th overall. I mean, it's a really heavy defensive line draft as far as talent, especially first round talent. So these corners may slide. I think receivers will slide too because it's not a lot of very impressive high end receivers in this draft as well. So I think receivers and corners may slide because of quarterbacks and edge rushers and tackles going left and right. And then lastly, want to take a look at some linebackers and the draft network feels like none of the linebackers are worthy going 16th overall. And so far from what I've seen as well, I kind of agree, man. I like Trenton Simpson. I like Henry Toa Toa, Drew Sanders, Noah Sewell, Dayon Henley. Love him. Love his potential. But as far 16th overall first round yeah i don't really see it with either of these guys i really don't and i do feel like we have a needed linebacker but maybe you can address that in free agency or later in the draft but definitely not 16th overall honestly i don't even think after a fantastic combine that any of these guys will end up going 16th overall or higher so i don't even think it's worth it for me honestly i think you go best player available i mean with us having needs kind of all over the place and i feel like offensive line is arguably one of our biggest needs right now and of course franchise quarterback is but i want to see what sam Howell can do anyway but if anthony richardson falls to you at 16 i think you gotta take that in my opinion but i know a lot of y'all disagree either way the most obvious need that i feel like all of us can agree on though is offensive line and so outside of that and even including that i strongly advise going best player available y'all know that's pretty much me every draft in life but especially a draft like this where there's no real top end generational talent in any position of need that we have cornerback offensive line linebacker there's a lot of great talent I think Christian Gonzalez is going to end up being a really good player. Joey Porter, all of these guys, Broderick Jones, Paris Johnson Jr. I think they all have the potential to be pro bowlers. But the way I felt about Micah Parsons in his draft, where I was like, we got to trade up to get him or a quarterback. The way I felt about Jamison Williams and Kyle Hamilton, I don't necessarily feel that great about any particular player in this draft, except for the quarterbacks. I love CJ Stroud. I love Bryce Young. And I'm definitely willing to take a chance on Anthony Richardson for sure. But I'm just going to ignore quarterback because Bryce Young and CJ Stroud are out of the range and i know a lot of people are against anthony richardson i'm not even sure if rivera and the guys like him and i'm pretty sure they're going to do everything that they can to give sam Howell as much to work with this upcoming draft anyway this upcoming offseason free agency all of that so i don't really see them going quarterback in the first round anyway so just ignoring quarterback i just don't really see any like top tier once every five drafts type of talents out there man for real so i think honestly you either go best player available at a position that we need though don't just go edge rusher <laughs> at 16th overall it's not that serious but you never know man michael mayer from notre dame draft network feels like he's a top 10 player in this draft if you just slide that far for any crazy reason you also have brian branch the safety from alabama but we have so much safety talent and nothing's a sure thing of course but first round i feel like we have bigger needs than that and i believe in going best player available but you still got to be strategic with it so honestly that's why i feel like trading back is probably going to be the solution that makes the most sense remember trading back from 11 to 16 we ended up getting wide receiver Jahan dotson running back brian robinson quarterback sam howell who's potentially our starting quarterback our expected projected starting quarterback this upcoming season it could potentially be a franchise quarterback and tight end cole turner who was really like the star of training camp it just never worked out throughout the regular season i still have high hopes for him and then brian robinson's literally carrying the team on his back and then we've had debates about jahan dotson and terry mclaurin who's the better receiver terry mclaurin's already going into his what fourth year jahan dotson just finished up his rookie season and before he got hurt it was him and stefan diggs leading the nfl and receiving touchdowns out of all players that's including tight ends running backs he had more touchdowns than travis kelsey before he got hurt then he was gone for a while came back took a couple of games for Taylor Heineke to find a way to get him the ball and then after that Jahan Dotson went right back to balling out so that was like one of the ultimate trade back scenarios where it just worked out pretty much as well as it could but remember it wasn't just simply trading back and we got those guys remember we trade our we traded our 11th overall pick to the Saints for the 16th 98th which we ended up taking Brian Robinson with and then a fourth round selection then we turned that fourth and the sixth that we already had into Sam Howell in the fifth and Cole Turner in the fifth as well and I think that was definitely worth it so so now looking further down the best players in the draft say if we trade back from 16 into the early 20s you never know man at maybe at that point you would take a chance on keely ringo again ceiling wise literally jalen ramsey but faster but even as a georgia bulldog fan i have to admit he's so raw i'm even a little squeamish taking him in the 20s of this draft i'm not gonna lie but if he ends up being the best he can be 
he can truly be a sauce gardener level type of player i mean it's there but i'm just not sure if you're ever going to get that out of him and even if you do how long is it going to take is it going to take three four years is it going to be after his rookie contract you know what i'm saying so i'm nervous as a georgia bulldog fan to even take keely ringo in the first and then you have darnell washington another georgia bulldog i feel like you draft him a tight end it changes your offense i don't think people understand how much georgia's offense ran through darnell washington literally we ran the ball to his side all of the time if we could that's why losing him in that ohio state game was huge i mean i know they lost a few players as well but we lost the majority of our starting defensive line and i don't think people really understand how important darnell washington was to todd munkin's magic last season literally a third tackle on the field a sixth offensive lineman on the field at all times that can catch i think he's one of those guys you literally design an offense around him just like georgia did so to be able to trade back and get darnell washington in the first i think is a home run hit in my opinion but then you also have devin witherspoon apparently according to draft network may still be there if we were to trade back into the 20s and the trade back and still get him huge still as well you also have clark phillips who i haven't watched a lot of tape on yet so i don't have an informed opinion on him yet maybe you take linebacker trenton simpson or maybe interior offensive lineman andrew Voorhees from usc maybe the other buckeyes tackle instead of paris johnson jr maybe you want dewan jones draft network feels like anthony richardson will be available 16th overall do you trade back and end up taking him like well he's still here for some reason we got to take the chance because i'm one of those people that feels like he easily has josh allen cam newton level potential and i feel like his floor is higher than people give him credit for honestly just off of the tape i watched I already agree with that and then if you go and watch the Twitter thread that I forgot his name, some guy did, and he's literally showing you the good and the bad. His floor is nowhere near as low as people say, but you know, again, I just don't really see the commanders doing it either way. So I wouldn't, I don't want to talk about Anthony Richardson too much, but I would be very happy to get him. I know a lot of y'all wouldn't touch him with a 10 foot pole, but man, and I know we're stockpiled on receiver, but Jalen Hyatt, I mean, some people feel like he could be another Tyreek Hill potentially. And even the draft network feels like Jackson Smith from the Buckeyes, reunite him, add him to the Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel, Ohio State trio that we have for the commanders. They feel like he could even be available if we were to trade back into the early 20s. They have him as the 23rd overall player in their draft board. And then if you add Jahan Dotson in there, that's just four Big Ten receivers, which is crazy. But it works. Them boys be balling, man. Them Big Ten be putting out them players, man. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please leave a like on this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. Let me know how you feel about the 16th overall pick. Do you want to trade up and get a certain player? Do you want to stay at 16 and take best player available? Do you want to prioritize need? Which need would that be offensive line? Lineman, tackle specifically maybe cornerback maybe linebacker if that's how you feel or do you feel like the best move is to trade back which i'm starting to kind of starting to grow on me when i entered this draft process at first i was like man i kind of want to take the best player there but now that i'm seeing how the draft is shaping out trading back may be the best solution let me know if you agree and then also of course man i appreciate all the support man shout out to all of my sponsors especially my Bowl sponsors whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out